Hi guys, welcome back to the Trilla Hill channel. If you're new here, my name is Deborah Freidenman and I have a Bachelor in Health Sciences Naturopathy and I'm a co-director to the Trilla Hill Academy. So in today's video, I actually want to discuss with you gut health and its link to disease. So gut health is often defined by the optimal digestion, absorption and assimilation of nutrients, which sounds pretty simple, but it's actually quite complex. So there's lots of different factors which impact our ability to break down and utilize the nutrients in food. So before we go into everything that can go wrong in our gut, I actually want to go through and explain what goes right and how our gut actually functions. Our gut has what we like to call a barrier, so it allows selective nutrients to pass through and it keeps everything else out. So you could say our gut is quite selective and controlling, it's like, almost like a security checkpoint. So our barrier is made up of specialized cells called enterocytes. And these enterocytes, they have a cell membrane shaped like a finger-like projection, which is called a villi, and that kind of sits up like this. And on top of that is hair-like extensions called microvilli. And the enterocytes function is to allow for the absorption of nutrients and due to the way that they are actually uh, functioning, it increases the surface area as well. So just past our barrier or security checkpoint, we actually meet a huge part of our immune system. So about 80% of our immune system sits here. And if you just imagine it like an army, our immune cells sit there and they essentially wait for particles or invaders that pass through our barrier that should not be there. So as soon as a particle, microbe or pathogen passes through our barrier, the immune system mounts an attack and destroys that. So what I want to discuss today is actually a condition called increased intestinal permeability, which is more commonly known as leaky gut. So what exactly does increased intestinal permeability mean? So essentially it means that particles and invaders that we typically want to keep out have managed to move past our security checkpoint and through our barrier into our system. So this can happen when our enterocytes are damaged or altered, but also when the glue that holds those cells together, called tight junctions, have also been damaged. So as we can see in this diagram, inside the gut we have food particles such as incompletely digested proteins, bacteria, bacterial fragments, waste products and toxins. So these can pass through our barrier, which as you can see here we have open tight junctions and damaged areas and they can pass through the barrier and activate our immune system on the other side. So our immune system marks them as foreign invaders, we recruit more immune cells and we mount an attack. But when we have a continuous leakage of substances through our gut barrier, our body doesn't have a choice but to send our immune system into this overdrive. So we increase our systemic inflammation. Some substances can cause a generalized inflammation throughout the body, whereas others cause a more localized attack. And this can sometimes be seen in the development of food intolerances or food sensitivities. So when we have this invasion throughout our, throughout our gut, we actually cause inflammation to our gut lining and we can damage our microvilli. And when our microvilli are damaged, we actually affect quite a few processes in there. So our microvilli are responsible for secreting various digestive enzymes um, as well as the absorption of nutrients. So it is kind of a knock-on effect. Intestinal permeability actually impacts our ability to break down and uptake nutrients. With disease, inflammation is actually the center point. So we've got a damaged gut, we've got this overactive immune system, and we have this systemic inflammation. So that can often be the trigger point for uh, intestinal or systemic disease development. In addition to that, inflammation, as it's systemic, it tra travels throughout the body. So often it picks the weaker, or whether that is a genetic weakness or just a predisposed weakness, with whichever organ in the body. So that is why sometimes the diseases in connection with gut issues such as intestinal permeability can be very varied. The most important question to ask is what causes intestinal permeability? When we know what causes an issue, we also know how to remove this step by step and allow our bodies to heal. So next I'd like to go through the 10 causes of intestinal permeability. Dysbiosis is the overgrowth of bad bacteria in the gut, resulting in an imbalance with our microbiome. 
It is important to control the overgrowth in order to re-establish the barrier in our gut and repair the mucosal lining. Candida overgrowth can occur as a result of a high sugar diet, imbalanced immune system stress, or from certain medications such as the oral contraceptive pill. An overgrowth in candida can cause inflammation in our gut wall, leading to intestinal permeability. Long-term alcohol consumption can result in intestinal mucosal damage, inflammation, dysbiosis, and worsen intestinal permeability. When we metabolize alcohol, a byproduct is produced which increases the formation of harmful pro-inflammatory metabolites, which impact our tight junction integrity. Stress is a major cause, so it's been well researched that both physical and emotional stress causing an increased cortisol level can induce intestinal permeability. Additionally, traumatic events or incidences in our lives have actually proven to alter our microbiome pretty much instantaneously. With intestinal permeability, there's an influx of these foreign particles into our bloodstream, which throws the immune system into overdrive. So this can actually also produce various antibodies, which make the body more susceptible to antigens in certain foods, and that can particularly be gluten and dairy. It's important to avoid all foods that can cause a reaction within the system to reduce our inflammation, the breakdown of our gut lining, and our intestinal permeability. Poor diet is a huge topic, so I'm only going to touch on this very lightly as I've got more tips on the blog post. But the main points are to avoid refined carbohydrates, margarine, trans fats, cakes and sweets, pre-packaged and processed foods. Gluten directly impacts the intestinal integrity through the release of zonulin. So zonulin is a protein that contributes to intestinal permeability. In addition to that, gluten contributes to the formation of antibodies, which can cause the secretion of um, more inflammatory mediators, which results in tissue damage. Parasitic infections um, actually degrade the protective lining of the gut and contribute to the development of GIT disorders and inflammation. But in addition to that, parasites also compete for nutrients, so there's often a nutritional deficiency present. Many pharmaceutical drugs impact our gut health. So, for example, antibiotics result in an impairment of the gut microbiome, as well as cause harmful effects on the intestinal epithelial cells and increase our risk of antibiotic-resistant microorganisms. Our environment is full of toxins from the air, food and daily products we use. So all of these toxins need to be removed from our system through phase one and phase two liver detox pathways. If our detoxification pathways aren't functioning optimally, the buildup of waste products actually causes inflammation and oxidative stress. So this can further impact our gastrointestinal system and also progress intestinal permeability. Thank you very much for watching guys, I hope you liked the video. If you have any comments or questions, please leave them below and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Thank you.